Hey y'all, today I'm gonna introduce you to your mother. This is a word. This is a word. This is a word. So hey, I um, it's a recycle day. I actually just, I've actually just dropped off a bunch of recycling at a place called Recycle Here in Detroit. And it's an amazing place. They have, you know, they basically have, the space is organized so you people, basically you bring in your own stuff and then they just have all of these very well labeled bins that just make very clear where stuff is supposed to go. And they keep it simple. And I really like that they keep it simple. Um, you can recycle pretty much everything. You know, they have one bin for your plastics, numbered one and two, and then they have another bin for your plastics, four through seven um, as well. And, uh, you know, they have cardboard, they have paper, they have colored glass, they have uh, clear glass, they have, um, I guess, I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but it's uh, basically, uh, you know, the material that like those foil line milk cartons are made out of. So they have a section for that. They have, um, and you guys, you'll have to really, really, really forgive me because I have no idea where I am going. I have no idea where I'm going. I just realized I have no idea where I'm going. Okay, all right. We need to, hold on a second. So you guys, I'm a little bit lost. I actually just went by the, I actually just went by the Motown Museum. I'm trying to get us, me, um, basically trying to get myself to uh, a hardware store. I'm gonna pick up some trying to get myself to a hardware store where I'm going to pick up some some you know rock salt because it's snowing here in Detroit if you haven't figured it out anyway so to, to recycle here it's a great place you can guess you know it's a really cool place you know they have everything batteries everything you even, they even have a place where you can you know electronics computers all that stuff you can drop it off which is um makes life really simple if you're if you don't know what to do with all of those things, you know, to know that there's a group of people who basically have dedicated some time and effort to um, collecting all those things for people and then delivering them to where they need to be. So that is that. Now, um, the other thing that I want to talk to you guys about really kind of briefly, simply, is um, yesterday in the vlog, I talked to you all about, you know, really being diligent. And this is, you know, for folks in the US, but again, if you're not in the US, you can definitely call people who are in the US. But people were looking for, you know, specific resources if they were interested in calling um, their, at least their, um, like, federal representative, their US, like their senator, their congressperson. And so there's two resources that I was able to locate. One of them is called democracy.io, and I guess the idea is it's like democracy input output, but it's democracy.io, and they are the place, if you wanna send an email to your representative, they make it super simple. You just put in your, basically you put in your address, <coughs> your state and your zip code, <coughs> And they tell you, um, they tell you, you know, they basically put you into a little form. They put you into a little form where you can send the email. And all you really need is the content of that email. You just need to specify the content of the email. So, you know, what do you want it to say? Which, again, I think is really simple, making it really simple because it should be easy. It should be easy to be engaged. It should not be difficult. Now, the other resource that I found is the 65.org, and that basically represents the 65% of voters who didn't vote for Donald Trump. And uh, it's it's a this is for people who want to make calls. And this uh, web this resource is kind of cool because they've got um, when you get to the front page, they have your weekly action. So they're 
suggesting what you might call about, like what's happening right now that you might want um, your call to have some, you want, where you want to have some influence right now. And so they not only have what to call about, but they have some scripts ready and you basically have to just plug in the name of your, you know, your politician and they make that simple too because then you can go on and you can just find the name of your politician. I think it's again really simple. They're making it really easy to participate in that way. And I think again that's something the thing I like about um, the 65.org is because it's they've got a weekly call to action. Get it? Weekly call to action kind of um, dropping the hint that you might want to check in every week and see what it is that you might want to be calling uh, about. The other great thing about that tool is they have um, issues listed and you can just click on that issue and they explain to you the process for calling about that specific issue. Again, I think that is really, really cool, making it super, super simple to uh, get involved in the process. And I think it was Debbie Daniels who suggested that there might be a tool like that available. And, you know, there was. So thanks, Debbie Daniels, for suggesting that I go in search of some tools, and I found some. And again, those were just the first ones. If you guys know of tools, um, please do not hesitate to write it down in the comments section that you know of a tool that you think is easier or if you've had an issue with any of the tools that I've suggested, you know, put it down there so that uh, we can just let people know what to what to look forward to. All right, while, we've been, while I've been driving, I have found myself exactly on the street that I wanted to be on, which is perfect. All right, so um, it is really... Guys, it's snowing, but worse than that, for some reason today in my car, uh, my windows are really foggy. Maybe it's because I'm running my mouth so much. Anyway, um, so, you know, if you see me squinting or if it looks like I'm driving a little, you know, ratchet, is because of that. Anyway, so the main part of this video, uh, why I, why I, you know, name this basically, you know, meet your mother um, or something, something to that effect is that I was uh, sent a link and it was not necessarily off topic because I've been having a conversation with you all about really the origins of civilization. And there's a lot of rhetoric out there right now um, talking about the fact that you know, Europeans are responsible for, you know, everything and that no other civilization has made as large a contribution to modern civilization than Europeans. And, oh my God, I don't mean to, you know, it's like, yes, a lot of people have done a lot of wonderful things and let's not knock people back and not let's not say, who's good, who's bad, let's not go there today, I'm just not in the mood. But, just the idea that it so dishonors the reality of where we came from. And so, um, Bruce Webb sent me a link to a PBS, a four part PBS series that is called, I believe it's called um, um, Africa's Great Civilizations. I believe that is the name of the series. And I'm not going to talk too much about the series because I'm just starting it. But um, as I said, I've been looking into this area for quite some time. I happen to be writing a play about you know, the origins of race as they exist in our, you know, modern, at least a modern American society. And so, you know, in doing that research, I had already come across all of this stuff that suggested that Africans have been around, Africans have been part of Western civilization from the very beginning. So when you're talking about Western civilization, you're talking not indirectly, but directly 
about the influence that Africans have had in the development of Western society. And what kind of makes me sad slash confused is the fact that so many people seem so quick to deny that reality. It just like I don't understand what the problem is. And they and they talk a little bit in the in the episode that I'm watching, they talk about, you know, the parts of kind of central uh eastern Africa where civilization began, where the first, you know, humans, you know, I guess the first folks that we could call human um, developed, you know, and where civilization um, as we know it began to develop. And they talk about, you know, m mitochondrial Eve, and that's who, I, when, I, when I say I'm going to introduce you to your mother, I'm going to park here and just sit for a while. Um, I'm at my first location, but I'm going to hang out with you and just finish this conversation. So yeah, so mitochondrial Eve being, you know, it's, I think what they, what they, what they, what they're trying to, what they're explaining is that all of existing, all existing, all human beings that are alive today are related to this one particular female that was found in Africa. Um, so that, you know, regardless of what was going on, where and what have you, we're all somehow connected to this, to this one particular individual. And they call her either African Eve or mitochondrial Eve, I believe. But um, that she, you know, was, you know, they, they date her somewhere, you know, 200,000 years ago, like maybe 200,000 years ago. But you know, there's all this like, well, who was first and where was society first? But this was here first. But the, what we never, what you never hear talked about. And when you, if you do a search for, you know, early civilizations, and I did this and I've done this several times, you don't find, you don't find Africa. Specifically, you don't find central and southern parts of Africa. You'll find Egypt, right? And people kind of agree, well, Egypt was great. And then there's like the whole thing of like, were, were Egyptians black? Were they white? And it just becomes this whole thing like, come on. Um, the idea that Africans can only be thought of as these primitive, inferior, I don't know. And I look at it as the relationship that children have with their parents, you know? And it's like petulant, it's like rebellious teenagers. And, you know, this idea that, you know, I, no, you don't, you didn't do anything for me. I'm my own person, right? And it's, yes, you're your own person, but you are your own person by the grace of your parents, Good or bad. Good or bad. You are who you are by the grace of your parents. Something brought these two beings together and you were created. And there are those cases where, you know, someone was attacked or what have you and, you know, where, the, you know, Maybe uh, one of the parents was not present at all, what have you. But someone, you know, regardless of biological birth, someone raised that individual. In the case of most people, someone raised that individual and even though the individual may rebel and may resent and may have all kinds of mixed feelings, there is a gratitude that, that is owed to the person who gave their time and their energy into making sure that you didn't just die exposed to the elements. And Peter, P Peter Ustinov has a quote, um, parents are the bones upon which 
children cut their teeth. Parents are the bones upon which children cut their teeth. And I feel like Africa, Africans are the bones upon which civilization has cut its teeth. And as I was watching the series, I was so, I got so emotional. I... And I don't know if it was because I was, you know, made, I was sad by the reality of today and the fact that, you know, people don't want to honor African history and the contribution of Africa to modern civilization. Africa, where philosophy was born, where mathematics was born, where astronomy was born, where, um, um, uh, where you know modern medicine was born. Yeah, you know, forgive me if I'm repeating myself, but the list goes on and on. So many of the modern sciences were born in you know the in the heart of Africa, not Egypt, not Egypt, Ethiopia, right? Where and Ethiopia and and Ethiopia to to the Ethiopians, the Egyptians were provincial, you know, and so and then you know from. Ethiopia to the Egyptians, from the Egyptians to the Greeks, to the from the Greeks to you know the you know the, the the modern Europe, you know. So there is a direct line, the wisdom, the knowledge, and to imagine how the early humans had to struggle against the environment. These early, these early human beings had to struggle against the environment. They figured out how to get food, how to collect food, how to survive as a, as a, as a group, how to work together, how to plant, how to grow, right? And we, you know, we, we understand that their diet was likely mostly vegan. It was likely mostly vegan because everything that they needed was there provided for them. It was like the Garden of Eden, right? And, you know, we talk, there's, you know, there's evidence that, you know, the first cultural objects are being found in Africa a hundred thousand years ago. A hundred thousand years ago. Arts and culture is beginning to develop in Africa. And then, you know, 80,000 years ago, a migration out of Africa that brings us to the rest of the world begins. And it took a long time. It took, let's say, you know, 70,000 years for people to kind of land wherever they landed in the various parts of the world. And I don't know, again, you'd have to watch the series to get into the details. But what I want to talk about is more this just utter lack of willingness to acknowledge the contribution of your mom. <laughs> That's your mom. So, I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? That's it for this video. Like it if you like it. Share it comment subscribe this is reg signing off love yourselves peace and i love myself the world is a ghetto because it's a dicky